I'm Willie Galloway, eHouse Garden Expert. Today I'm going to show you how to build a terrarium. Terrariums are miniature indoor gardens and they're the perfect solution for people who want to grow houseplants but don't have a lot of time to take care of them. Here's what you'll need to build your own terrarium. A clear glass container, gravel and charcoal for the drainage layer, potting soil to plant the plants in, plants of course, and you can also add decorative elements, a gnome or a seashell or maybe some rocks. Also, if you're using a jar that has a narrow opening, you can use chopsticks or skewers and a piece of paper as a funnel to help you put all of the items in place. Step one. The first thing you'll want to do when you're building a terrarium is select a container. And your options are almost limitless because all the container needs to be is clear glass and big enough to house the plants you're interested in growing. You can use old aquariums, fish bowls, glass jars, and even compote dishes. I've chosen to use a old fish bowl to build my terrarium because the opening is large enough for me to reach my hand into and that makes it a lot easier when you're constructing it. Before you actually start building the terrarium, keep in mind that you're going to want to wash the jar with hot soapy water so that it's clean and sterilized. Step two. Next, you're going to want to create the drainage layer of your terrarium. You may want to use a piece of paper to help direct the gravel into the bottom of the container without harming the glass. You're going to want to layer, use larger pea gravel. This is um, some gravel that's left over from a former fish bowl that I had. And you're just going to want to gently place it in the bottom of the bowl. Layer about an inch of gravel into the bottom of the bowl. This will create a nice drainage layer and make sure that your plant's roots don't have too much water around them. So I'm going to go ahead and take the funnel out and then just continue layering a little bit more rock. Once you have the gravel in place, then you're going to want to add some charcoal in. And this is just another finer layer um, of drainage to go on the top. And so you're going to layer in the charcoal and you're going to want it to be about a half an inch deep. Step three. Next, you're going to want to put potting soil into the bottom of the container. This is the growing medium that your plants are going to grow in. It's important to use a sterilized potting soil. So buy a new bag of potting soil and use it fresh. You're just going to want to pour it into the container, being careful to not get too much soil on the sides of the container because it will be difficult for you to clean up later. So I like to sort of pour it in a mountain in the center of the pot and then spread it around the sides. That way you minimize the amount of soil that you get on the sides of the glass. And you're probably going to want about a two inch layer. Step four. Next you're going to want to think about plants. It's important to choose plants that all have the same growing requirements. I've chosen plants that like high light and are tropical. Um, but you could also choose cacti and succulents. Those are drought tolerant plants. The important thing to remember is, as I said, you need to make sure that the plants all have the same growing requirements because they're going to be growing in a small space. So you're not going to have room to have a dry plant in one area of the terrarium and a plant that likes wet conditions in another. Step five. Before you go ahead and stick your plants in the container, you should spend a few minutes thinking about how you want your terrarium to look. Here's where the benefit of having a wide mouth terrarium comes in because you can actually stick your plants into the container and decide if you like how they look for your placement. So I think I'm going to place my containers like this once my plants are planted. It's important to put taller plants at the back of the terrarium and shorter plants at the front. Once you've decided how you want to arrange your plants, you can go ahead and take them back out if you've placed them inside and dig your planting holes. Now if you were working with a narrower um, mouth container, you could use your skewer or your chopstick to dig the holes. But because my container has a wider mouth, I'm going to go ahead and use my hand and dig the holes for my two little trees and my African violet. And again, these plants all share the same growing condition needs. They like higher light and moist tropical conditions. Step six. Now you're ready for the fun part. You can plant your terrarium. You're going to want to remove your little plants from their containers. 
a lot of times they'll be root bound. So what you're going to want to do is tease the roots gently apart. And it's okay, you don't have to be super gentle. The roots are pretty hardy. You're also going to want to remove a lot of this extra soil that's on the plants because that's going to give you a little bit more room to play with once your plant's down in the terrarium. So go ahead and just shake off the soil as much as you can and then place it in your pre-prepared planting hole. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave it there like that and firm all of the plants in at once. So you're just going to repeat that with all of your plants, that same process. Loosening up the roots, removing extra soil. This would also be the time if your plants had any yellowing foliage or any little bits of the part of the plant that you didn't like too much to go ahead and trim that off. And you could just use scissors to do that. And so I'm going to stick my second little tree in to its container. Now I'm going to get my African violet ready. It actually does not have a very extensive root system, so I'm not going to remove too much of the soil because it has a pretty delicate root system. However, there are a few flowers that are past their prime, so I'm going to go ahead and snip those off because I don't want them in there prior to planting. And then I'm going to go ahead and nestle this little guy right into the terrarium. And then I'm going to gently firm soil around the base of my plants, making sure that the roots are totally covered. Step seven. After your plants are planted, you're going to want to water them. It's best to use a watering can that has a long spout because you can get it in and kind of spot water the plants. You don't want to put too much water in the terrarium because the plants are going to make their own water as they evaporate, as there's evaporation. So um, overwatering is the number one reason why terrariums fail. So from the outset, you want to be very sparse with the watering. And so you're going to go ahead and just gently water in your plants. You can go around with a paper towel and smooth down the edges of the soil and get any extra bits off the side of the glass. You can add in any special touches that you want to put in. I'm going to be putting in this little gnome that I have and then I think I'm going to make a false stream bed with just a little bit of this extra gravel that I had left over from the drainage area. And so I'm just going to sort of drizzle it in haphazardly through my trees and it'll just be a nice little addition to my terrarium. And my terrarium's complete. 